It's Chris from Chris and the Acrylic Pouring and we're based in the UK. Hello and thank you for joining me today. This video is all about um, colour mixing and how colours work together. You will find it really helpful to watch my original beginner's colour theory video which is number 87 because some of the concepts I'm talking about in this video I explain more fully in the first video. I'm looking into the colour theory more deeply and when I was discussing colours to begin with I was saying that when you mix red and blue together you get purple but you get different types of purple and it all depends on what colours you start with. I use these principles when I'm layering my cups because I know that some certain colours are going to work well together and this video looks at why colours do work well together and why some don't. To start with I'm going to look at the colour bias of a colour and what I mean by that is some colours lean towards a warmer tone, some to a kind of um, cooler tone. I've got two blues here, one is a cerulean blue and the other is a light ultramarine blue and to see what their bias is I'm going to mix them with white and what the white will do is it will tone down the colour make it more chalky looking, but also reveal what the colour is actually made up of, what it actually leans towards. When I mix the white with the ultramarine blue, you can see it's kind of going a pinky colour. This colour leans towards the red bias of the colour spectrum. When I add the white to the cerulean blue, you can see a more greener, colder tone. So the ultramarine is towards the redder side of the spectrum, and the cerulean blue is towards the colder green side of the spectrum. So why is this information important? If I want to make a green, I know that blue and yellow makes green, but it depends on which blue I use. If I use the cerulean blue to make the yellow, because it leans towards the yellow side of the colour spectrum, it will give me a brighter yellow. If I add the ultramarine to the yellow it will give me a kind of murky green because the ultramarine leads, leans towards the red side of the colour spectrum. Let's try this out and make green. So I've got primary yellow and I'm going to mix it with the ultramarine blue and I'm just getting a very manky green colour. Can you see it's quite a dull green and you think hang on but blue and yellow should make green Ah, but then you have to start thinking about what blue you're using. This, I mean, this, there's nothing wrong with this green for landscapes. It's kind of a muted green, but it's not your kind of bright green. So yellow, primary yellow again with this um, cerulean. That is a brighter green. So... I explained the colour wheel and how if you add blue and yellow together you get green um, but it depends on what blues and what yellows you use to make the greens. There's nothing wrong if you want a kind of dark dull green use a kind of a blue which is um, biased towards more of the pinker spectrum. If you're looking for a brighter green then use um, a blue which is kind of a colder blue which leans towards the kind of yellow, yellowy um, green side of the spectrum. And because I'm using yellow and this bluey greeny colour, I get a really, really nice green colour. I know it doesn't look bluey greeny there, but when you add the white, you start to see which way the colour is um, leaning towards. You can see this blue here is leaning towards the um, pinks and sorry, the red side of the colour spectrum. So even though I um, both had a really the bright yellow primary colour I mixed them together with, you can see you get two different um, greens. This is important for when you're putting your layers in your cups. It's a bit more sophisticated than what I was saying in my basic colour theory video. If you have um, the blue and yellow together layered in a cup and you want a bright green when they where they overlap, use a kind of blue which is, leans towards the cooler side of the spectrum. If you don't mind getting a duller green, then use a blue that leans towards the um, redder side of the spectrum. This information is very important when you're mixing your own custom colours because then you can start to um, appreciate what adding one colour to another colour 
what kind of results you get. The colour bias test is really great because it shows you which way the colour's leaning. Sometimes it's not obvious, so using this test will clear up some doubts in your mind. We're really lucky that acrylics come in such a range of colours. A lot of them are really bright and some are really oversaturated. And what I mean by that is if you think about the old 50s Hollywood films where the film is just so bright and vivid, which is great when you want that. But if you've only got some limited colours and you want a more subtle colour, then there are ways to actually tone this colour down. So in this next section of the video, I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is the really bright cadmium green here, and this is primary red. Now, if you refer back to the colour wheel, green and red are complementary colours. They're on opposite sides of the colour wheel. And in my last video, I explained that if you, um, if complementary colours mix to get together too much, you get mud. However, you can use, use this to also tone down a colour. So this is the green. And you can see it's a very bright green. Okay, and if I wanted to dull it slightly, I could just take a tiny bit of the red. That may be too much red, we shall see. That's the bright green that we started with. And adding a bit of red has taken a bite of the... Um, the green, it's slightly dulled it. And obviously if you mix more of these two colours together, you'll just end up with mud. But if you're custom mixing your colours and you've only got a really bright vivid green and you want something a bit duller, rather than adding black um, to um, darken it, adding the complementary colour actually desaturates it, 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 it adjusts its chroma value, it just looks um, slightly duller. So if you're looking for more natural colours in your um, pores, you can custom mix by adding um, a bit of the complementary colour. If you want to darken the colour, you can add black to it, and I'm going to show you what happens when you do this. I've added black to the cadmium green to darken it, and you can see that it goes very dark. So. You can be more subtle with the black. The more you add, the darker the colour is going to be. If you want to lighten your colour, you can add white. Now white will tint down the colour and it will kind of give a kind of pastel chalky finish to the actual colour itself. The more white you add, the lighter the colour will be. You can see that's very vivid and that's very soft and pastel and chalky. So there's different ways you can um, mix your colours. So you, if you add a complementary, it takes the edge of it, it dulls it slightly. You can add black to darken it, or you can add white to lighten it. But there's different consequences of these actions that you're doing. But if you understand these kind of rough bases, then it will help you mix your own um, colours. So if I want to custom mix a colour, let's try and make a purpley, perhaps plum colour. It all depends what colours you start with as to what colour you're actually going to get. So I've got the cerulean blue here, a phthalo blue and the ultramarine. I've got a cadmium red and I've got a vivid pink. So we'll see what colour purples we can get. So if I take a bit of the red to mix in with these blues, Let's see. So I'm expecting the ultramarine blue to give the brightest colour. And this is obviously mixing with the red. You can put a bit more red in if you want it redder. So that's kind of a plummy purple. Let's try this with the phthalo blue, the red. Oh, that's a very dark colour. You can see, even though I'm mixing red and blues together, the colours that I'm getting out are totally different. The purples look totally different. Let's put just a bit more red in here. 
the red and the cerulean. Let's put the rest of this red in. So, that's, that's, that's just yuck. That's just not a great colour. Actually, I quite like that as a blue-grey colour, but that is not purple. So that's given us the best, brightest purple. That's quite a dark plum colour. Now, if we try this again, but let's try it with the vivid pink. I'm still expecting the phalo, um, the ultramarine to be the brightest. Wow, so that's a lovely, lovely purple colour. Compared to the red, that's kind of a very mauvey plum colour. And then with the phalo, with the pink, it's a duller version of that. And then the pink and the blue. Yeah, the pink and the cerulean. I shouldn't say blue, they're all blue. Ha. Ooh, so that's given you a kind of very, a mauvey. So you can see the difference between adding the red and the pink. That's a very, very nice purple. I do actually like this um, kind of colour here. And this is just way too dark and blah. And this, you can see, just looks like mud. Not great, but that's the best. So the ultramarine and the pink gives a really nice purple. So I'll show you now how I would actually mix up the colour. Way how much paint I'm going to be using. So the ultra, so always start with the lightest colour first. And I know it's difficult to tell between these two, but I'm going to add the pink first. So I'm going to add five millilitres and then five millilitres the ultramarine blue. I mix these colours together really well and make sure they're fully incorporated. Now I've just done a very basic 50-50 split of the blue and the pink but if you wanted it more pink you would have more pink added. Same for the blue, if you wanted darker you add some darkness with black or if you wanted it lighter, you would add some white. But I've just done a very simple mix just to show the process. When I'm happy that the paints are mixed together, I do a test on the colour. I just put some onto the card and I will let it dry. Because once it's dry, you'll get a true indication of what the actual colour looks like. So I'm happy with that colour and I'm just going to add 10 mil of my pouring medium. And then I just mix that in. I will mix that more later, but then I'll also you can see it's really thick. So I will add water to it, keep on mixing until I'm happy with the result. And that's how to mix a custom colour. Now when I'm using a custom colour in a painting, I always mix too much of the custom colour because when the painting's dried, you never know if you've got to do any touch-ups. And it's very difficult to match the colours from start. But if you've got excess of the colour that you've mixed, it makes it easier to um, touch it up. I do love colour theory and all the way colours mix together. I'm no expert, but I do find it really fascinating. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. Do take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.